Hey, Evan, thank you so much. So fun to meet with you today. I talked to uh, my co-founders and my investors, looked at my cap table, and unfortunately, we can't do anything less than 50. <laughs> and his response was, oh, that's unfortunate. Well, I wish you the best of luck. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> and I was like, no! Get Larry back on the phone. Larry, I told you 40 was enough. Like, you had to be all greedy, didn't you? Come on, Larry. And he's like, wait, just wait. Like, I know how this works, and clearly Evan does as well, so just hold. I think he'll call back, and if he doesn't call back in like 20 minutes, then we'll call him back. Like, stay chill. Holy cow, when you're waiting for a flight and you know you've got like 10 minutes before it takes off and this is going on, yeah, that's why I'm feeling a little bit nervous right now. So, Evan calls me back, okay? He says, look, I don't know if we can do 50, but we'll definitely talk about it. I want to make it work. We'll start negotiations. We'll have this done by the weekend. Okay, so get on my flight, go back to Hawaii, <laughs> okay? This is me trying to enjoy some family time at the beach while negotiating. Man, do you remember those days? I would legit be on the phone because Hawaii's time difference. I'd wake up 3 a.m., be on phone calls for hours. Negotiations, negotiations. Here's Snapchat, here's Larry on the other phone. Snapchat would ask me a question that I don't understand. Larry, what are golden handcuffs? What does that even mean? <laughs> okay, okay, can you just tell him that? Oh, okay, fine, I'll tell him. And then I would talk to Snapchat. I'm just regurgitating the info that I'm hearing from a very skilled lawyer. I don't know what any of it means, okay? And then, oh shoot, it's time for soccer practice. Hey, uh, guys, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna have good service because I'm in Hawaii. Hang up, go to soccer, okay? Get to soccer. Getting taped up, getting my ankles taped up. Gary, you seem a little distracted. Are you okay? Oh, I just got a lot of stuff going on back home. Uh, I'll be fine. Let's, uh, let's go to soccer practice. Do soccer practice. As soon as training was over, boom, back on the phone. Okay, guys, sorry, sorry. Uh, Hawaii cell service is crazy. Okay, let's keep negotiations going. <laughs> Wife wants to go to the beach. Let's go to the beach. But I am still going through these crazy negotiations. Um, oh, meanwhile, my wife's pregnant through all this. Uh, it was really hard to convince her when she's nine months pregnant to move last minute to Hawaii so that I can play soccer. Wait, honey, don't unpack. Things might get crazy. Just don't unpack yet. Trust me. <laughs> so during this time, it was nonstop phone calls back and forth. Hawaii, nonstop uh, flights back and forth between Hawaii and LA. And that's when this happened. Um, Okay, so during negotiations, the price had got to 44 million, okay? And me and my buddies are at Walmart in Hawaii. Can't remember what we were buying, but I was on the phone the whole time again for the negotiations, and they could just see me like pacing up and down the aisleways, but this one was different. Like they could see something was really heavy on my heart. So the negotiations had reached 44 million. The deal was they would pay us $44 million. I would go play soccer at BYU, Hawaii, finish my season, and then come join Snapchat. Well, the CEO throws a curveball at me, and on the phone, he's like, look, I don't got a lot of time. How about I just give you $10 million extra, and you quit soccer now and come join me next week? And I mean, just telling you how it is, like when he said that, when I heard the, those words through the phone, it's like I could feel like the literal shackles around my, my wrists, my ankles, and my heart. Like, it's like someone just reached in and stole my youth, stole my soccer. And the, oh, it's hard to explain that feeling, but when he said that, I just spoke from the heart and I said, thank you for the offer. Um, no thank you, let's go ahead and keep it at 44, and I'm going to uh, finish my season of soccer. And I hung up. And it's like as soon as I heard like the click of the hang up, my brain woke up and it was like, that's ten million dollars, and that's not all your money. Like you've got co-founders, you've got investors, you've got your co-founders that have like built this together with you, and that's for them too. If it were up to just me, I honestly would have just played soccer because you have your entire life to make money, but you don't have your entire life to spend doing what you love. Uh, enjoying your youth, being with family and your loved ones, your best friends, and that's what I felt like I was giving up. And so my honest answer was exactly what I told Evan. But very quickly I understood that this, this question was bigger than me, 
And so I called Evan right back, and I was not lying. What was the word? Puffed? Puffed I puffed him. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I puffed his way, and I said, Evan, I'm sorry, but I'm just too excited to join your company. I'm going to quit soccer. Let's put it back from 44 million to 54 million, and let's do this deal. And that is how it ended at a price of $54 million. This photo is when he said, OK, look, this, this um, acquisition is going to be completely confidential. No one's going to know about it. You can't tell your parents. You can't tell your best friends. You can tell your spouse and nobody else. Uh, and that's like in the legal terms of this deal going down. So we agreed to it, and in order for it to be completely confidential, they even required us to change the name of our company so that if lawyers or journalists were digging through the files, they wouldn't see that Snapchat acquired Scan, they would see that Snapchat acquired company X, or whatever we named it. So he's like, what do you want to name it? You can name it Projects if you want. And I was like, you know what? Let's name it Illuminati. If you know about Illuminati, that is the term of selling your soul to the devil for the sake of financial gains. <laughs> so off the top of my head, I was like, you know what, let's go with Illuminati. And he was like, huh, never heard that before. OK, let's do it. So if you were to dig up those records, you would see that once upon a time, Snapchat acquired Illuminati for $54 million. <laughs> and there is the signing of my soul. And that's when I had to go to the coach of BYU soccer and say, I'm sorry, but I'm quitting. And he's like, why are you quitting? Like, the season's just getting started. And I was like, ah, it's a long story, and I can't tell you legally. Um, and I mean, that was just a crazy time, to be honest, because when it went down, again, to know that something that massive had just immediately changed our lives forever, and you can't tell so many of the people you care most about, it's just a weird, weird experience. So luckily, I could tell my co-founders. And my co-founder, Kirk, sent me this text message that I found in my journal. It said, check your Wells Fargo account and do a little dance. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I also remember, because he's like, have you told Jessica yet? Because my wife's going crazy right now. And uh, I was like, no, Jessica's like three days away from having a baby. I'm going to wait till she's in labor and just distract her. <laughs> babe, 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 I know. Calm down. You're, you're doing great. You're doing great. Look at our bank account. <laughs> OK. So how are we doing on time? Am I all right? Oh, geez, OK. <sighs> OK. So we, we joined Snapchat. We uh, go over there. We move everything over there. Um, this was our little office. It was like in a secret part of the building, and not even the people at Snapchat like knew who we were, why we were there, anything. And um, this is the reinvention of the barcode. We reinvented it. We called it the Snap Code. If you've ever seen this, I mean, it's like my pride and joy now that I've left Snapchat. That I'll continue to see it all around the world. I watched the movie the other day, uh, Spider Verse, and it was like in the movie. Is that cool? It's super cool. I designed that. And um, uh, after about three months of being at the company, this happened. So there's this top secret story. Snapchat purchased my company. No one knows about it until North Korea got involved. This crazy story just gets crazier. So <laughs> North Korea hacked Sony and Snapchat's emails. With that, just comes spilling out all the emails that Snapchat has ever sent, and journalists are just going crazy. What do they find? They find the emails of all the details of our acquisition. And so I'm sitting at the office at Snapchat next to another designer who has no idea of my background. He just thinks I'm a designer that got hired out of, high school, out of college. And uh, I'm at my computer. He's at his computer. And Austin looks at me and he's like, dude, Garrett, what is this? And I look over, and it just like, the headline of that one, I think it was Business Insider, is you know, super confidential, Snapchat acquires Utah startup, Garrett G, $54 million. And the, my designer colleague looks at me and he's like, who are you? He's like, what? what? And I was like, I got to talk to my people. <laughs> <laughs> and right away, like, the lawyers came into the office because this all just happened, like, as I'm experiencing it. They're like, Garrett, you got to come with us. Life's about to get real crazy. You're going to hear from a lot of journalists. Just don't talk to anyone. It would be better if you turned off your phone. We'll figure this out over the next few days. And oh, man, like, 
I can at least say that as my family and friends found out through this and not through me, credit to my close family and friends that they understood. They understood that for legal reasons, I couldn't tell them and they didn't judge me. It was really hard the few that did judge me for it and thought that I was keeping secrets for them on purpose. Um, but the situation was what it was. And it was a really like, just crazy, crazy time. And honestly, it, 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 it did one thing very well for me. It made me step back and question, like, OK, do I want to say Snapchat? Is this right for me? Like, now that this is all exposed, this is all out there, like, what do I do next? OK? So I'll do my best to paint you the picture of where I was at that point. Um, of the $54 million, a lot of that goes to the investors, a lot of that goes to my co-founders, and then some of it comes to me. And on top of having that money from the acquisition, I also had my uh, salary, Snapchat was paying me uh, $180,000 a year uh, for being there. And then they would throw on top of that about a million dollar bonus for each year I would stay there. I'm a young man. I'm fresh out of BYU. Like, I'm not different than you guys. Like, that gasp, yeah, that was like my nonstop for like a year, OK? <laughs> And so it sucked so hard that something didn't feel quite right. And I felt like the next thing that I needed to do was leave Snapchat. It's just how I felt in my heart. I, uh, I called my brother, who advice I value perhaps more than my own. And I just like, I need to hear your voice. I need you to hear, it, hear this out. And my brother, at the time, he's a school teacher. He's, you know, he's pulling into like 30, 40K a year and supporting his entire family living in a one-bedroom home. And so when I call him and I'm like, okay, hey, here's the whole situation. This is how much I got from the acquisition. This is how much the salary is. This is how much the bonuses are. I feel like I need to leave, but I can't really tell you why. It's a great job. I'm having fun here. Jess loves LA, but something deep inside tells me I need to leave. What do you think I should do? He's like, I'll call you back. He called me back like two hours later, and he's like, I just can't get over those numbers. Like, we can't even imagine. Like, those are crazy numbers. I can't even imagine like, what that would do to our lives. And I was like, I get it, I get it, OK, so I should stay. And he's like, that being said, and knowing you, I know that you need to leave uh, Snapchat. Uh, and again, it wasn't, it wasn't we, we had made enough money from the acquisition that it's not like I was going to leave Snapchat, and all of a sudden we were going to be like hard up for cash. But there was just, I think it was maybe the frugal upbringing and like normal side of me that's like, that's a ton of money. That's a huge opportunity. So many people would be like dying even for that job position. Am I ungrateful for just like leaving it behind because I feel like it's the right thing to do inside me? And it, it was a crazy difficult decision. And I knew if I pondered on it too long, I would listen to the outside voices and not to my heart. And so immediately that night, I call up the CEO and I say, hey, I got to like meet with you in person tomorrow. So I scheduled that meeting. Uh, that morning, I'm sitting at my desk and I just randomly got a bloody nose. I guess that's what happens when you're that nervous. Okay. Okay. Um, and he, uh, his, his office is a glass box, like the walls are glass, okay? I show up to that meeting and he's like legit yelling at another employee, like super angry. And I was like, oh, I picked the wrong day to do this. Um, and I went in and, you know, perhaps made the hardest decision in my life to that date. Uh, and just told them straight up, said, look, love you, love the company, have no solid reason to be leaving other than uh, I feel like this is what's best for my family. And so with that, I'm, I'm leaving the company. And to my wonderful surprise, he, he was so understanding about it, so supportive of it. He said, if you ever want to come back, you've got a job here. But I get it. Like, you're, you're an entrepreneur. You have that inside you. I have the same thing in me. And I get it. So best of luck to you, and uh, go, go on your way. So in closing, that is what has sparked what a lot of the world knows us as today, the Buckless family. When I went back after quitting Snapchat, it was my wife's idea to take some time off, decompress, don't do anything entrepreneurial for a while. Let's just travel the world. And I was like, well, I'll do a little bit entrepreneurial. I am going to start an Instagram account and a YouTube while we do our travels. And that has brought us to where we are today.